I'm here today in the Bracket Therapy Suite at the London Regional Cancer Program with Dr. Nicholas Chattel, fellow in Bracket Therapy, and Dr. David D'Souza, one of our radiation oncologists. Today we're going to talk a little bit more about interstitial Bracket Therapy. So to start off, what is interstitial Bracket Therapy? So there's two words that perhaps people are not familiar with. It refers to interstitial, means putting something into tissues. And brachytherapy, it comes from a Greek word, brachy meaning short, therapy meaning treatment. So we're delivering treatment in the tissues from a short distance. And we're accomplishing that using a radioactive source. Okay, so can you describe a little bit about how the procedure works? So we do interstitial brachytherapy for a number of sites, but what I'm going to focus on today is what is used with oncological cancers. We have the fortune of having the resources of a team that has built up a program that allows us to deliver specialized care to women with gynecological cancers that are not widely available in Ontario or even across the country. So we have referrals coming into other parts of Ontario and even outside of the province. What, what happens often is if a woman has a cancer that is affecting the gynecologic tract, uh, to give enough dose of radiation, which is often the only way of curing it, requires giving a high dose of radiation that cannot be accomplished just with an external beam radiation machine. Uh, there is other forms of brachytherapy that require just putting an applicator into the uterus or through the cervix. But if the tumor is going out to the sides from treating in the center, you cannot get the radiation dose out to the sides adequately. So this is perhaps not necessarily a new treatment, but the way we, it has been adapted using the equipment that we have and the imaging is relatively new. And I'm proud to say that we're one of the few places that are able to deliver this treatment. So I can explain to you a little bit of the equipment that we have here that shows what we do for a procedure. That would be great. So this is a template. Uh, one can think of it like a coordinate system like Battleship. As you can see, there are little holes that are in rows along this here, and there's a hole right now in the center here. So in order to treat a patient with uh, cancer involving the vaginal area and to the tissues around, we have this, which is a cylinder. And this allows us to to put a cylinder through this template and give some stability inside the patient. As you can also see that there are grooves along the sides of this cylinder that will allow us to put uh, ways of delivering radiation into the patient. So after this is done, there are ways of stabilizing it in place. And then there are needles that are used, such as this one right here. And what will happen while the patient is asleep under a general anesthetic so they don't feel anything, Needles are advanced first through along the grooves of the cylinder in, and then we also have the option of putting needles further out in, in these holes that are, or grid that allow us to know exactly where the needles are going into the patient. There's a specific system to allow that there's adequate spacing, and we also have imaging, including an MRI that's usually done prior to the procedure, that will guide us to know exactly where the tumor sits in three dimensions. We, at the time when we do the MRI, we actually put a cylinder into the patient that is pretty much identical to this one. So when we go to do our, our procedure and we have our needles in place, we will do a scan after, a CAT scan. And that will allow us to overlap the MRI images and the CAT scan images so we can see the tumor, and then we have our needles in place and know exactly how to cover the tumor. There is the work of uh, nursing that help with the procedure itself, and then there's a physicist who's involved in doing the plan. Planning it takes at least two to three hours. It requires accounting for where all the needles sit in three dimensions relative to the patient, for us to map out the tumor and the patient's organs, such as their bladder and their bowel, and then coming up with a way to have a little radioactive source that is this tiny, it's, in, it's housed inside here, uh, this is obviously not a real radioactive source, I would be holding it in my hand, that will actually travel in and out of these needles and go into the patient, deliver the dose of radiation. It will step back in a remote control manner. Uh, we are all actually outside the room while the treatment is being delivered, although the patient is monitored. And it will give the dose of radiation very precisely. It allows interruptions of the treatment, and when it's done, it will go right back into the machine it was housed. And this is, in fact, the machine um, as you can see, there's a tube that connects out, and then this will actually connect on uh, to the needle, which will be going through the template of the patient. 
and it will actually, the source will come out through this tubing into the patient and then go back in and then it will do it for the next meal. This treatment often offers a chance to cure when cure is otherwise not possible. So we, some of the reasons we get referrals from outside is for patients who have had a cancer before. It hasn't, it's recurred or it hasn't gone away entirely and they only have a disease in this location in the gynecologic tract. And what stands between the patient not being cured and being cured is getting rid of that tumor in the skin. And this allows us to give enough radiation to potentially cure patients. That's amazing. Thank you so much for your time today and for bringing us inside the breath therapy suite here at the London Regional Cancer Program. I'm Yeti Jelena, bringing you inside LHSC.